If you think of it, the whole system of public education around the world is a protracted process of university entrance. And the consequence is that many highly talented, brilliant, creative people think they're not. Because the thing they were good at at school wasn't valued or was actually stigmatized. In the next 30 years, according to UNESCO, more people worldwide will be graduating through education than since the beginning of history. It's a process of academic inflation, and it indicates the whole structure of education is shifting beneath our feet. in high school, there just weren't very many options toward the end of high school. If you were college prep, you just stayed in your high school seat and you just kept taking the classes and then at the end you took the ACT or the SAT once and then you applied to one or two colleges and you went to college. School historically has been one of the slowest change agents um, in moving forward and keeping up. It is no longer true that the best college prep means sitting in a high school seat and just taking the classes that are prescribed. That is no longer true. Our educational system got so fixated on the traditional high school to four-year degree um, idea. That works very well for some young people and it works very well for some career fields. It doesn't work so well for some others. How often do you hear a parent say, well, Johnny's going on to this college or this university, as if that's the end in itself? Four children, um, and of all four, three have gone on to Ohio State. None have finished a degree, which is fascinating because they don't, didn't know what they want to do. And uh, so they're working and uh, trying to decide what they're going to do. Well, my oldest sister, Jenny, she like straight out of like high school she went into college and she went to Ohio State because my dad works there and she didn't finish out. Um, my brother he got a full ride scholarship for lacrosse for Westling and he probably went there for like a couple of years and then he dropped out because he still didn't know what he wanted to do in life um, and now he's working on a auto pawn shop. My other sister Laura uh, a sophomore in college does not know what she's majoring in, so she took a couple semesters off right now. As a parent, you just want your kids to be happy. You know, I particularly care if they go to college or get a master's or a bachelor's degree. I want them to do something they like. Uh, there is a new worst case scenario in America. If you go to college and you rack up debt and you leave without a degree, that's a disaster. The cost of college since 1975 has gone up more than 250%. And in 1975, about 35% of students needed to take out additional student loans mm -hmm. in addition to what the school gave them. Today, that's 65%. Looking at how my parents went through debt, it's really debilitating for the first 5 to 10, even maybe 15, 20 years of your life, especially if you don't find a very high-paying job, as is always promised. We have a society where successful people are encouraged to go to college, but it is a it's a mistake to, uh, to think that uh, that's what makes people successful. It costs up to a quarter of a million dollars to go through four years of college today. Unfortunately, you have to think about the practical things and are you actually going to get a job where you can pay off this incredible debt uh, you take on. children leave, when young adults leave the high school setting, and they prepare for what's next, and the majority of our families that we work with, their children are heading to college. When they head on to that next step, we want them to do so with clarity and confidence and not with giant question marks over their head. In the last three weeks, Ohio gave 1.2 million tests. and. I know every time I had to pull a student out of a lab, a program, or a classroom, it made me think about what creativity was just lost, what opportunity to learn was just lost so they could test. 
if we as parents could somehow be a ghost in our child's classroom setting, like in a normal day in high school, if we could somehow sit in that class and actually go through their whole day, I often say that we would probably run screaming from the building <laughs> and things would really change. It's hard. It's hard to be lectured to. It's hard to sit in, you know, and, and kids talk about it, like feels like prison. Yeah, when you hear a test, you're like, oh, really? Another test? Like you get this huge, like, pain inside of you when you hear a test. And a, I, I think that adding more tests isn't going to do anything but just put more stress on the students. As like students, I feel like we're just learning stuff for the test. We're not actually learning for like knowledge. We're just kind of like trying to get the A on the test and study the materials to get better for like that test. I don't think a test can determine like my actual like knowledge of whatever we're studying. Um, it is draining our personnel. It's draining our um, revenues. It's draining our students' energy, our teachers' energy. I mean, we're exhausted because we are testing students on much of what they already know and are learning and are taking away opportunities for them to learn more. We're neglecting too many students who have, they're so talented. The students here humble me every day. And it's unfair to ask all students to be assessed in one very narrow way. We're missing a huge talent pool in, in our nation's youth. The impetus to add uh, measurement to our system of education is a good one. Uh, measurement is super important. We can't personalize learning without measurement. The problem is that our, our measures are sort of lagging our, our aspirations. We need better ways to think about um, kids' mindsets. We need better ways to help them become aware of, of their ability to manage themselves. We need better information to help them think about how they collaborate with other students, not just academic factors, but also uh, success skills. We sit with students and interview them. We ask them to work through, talk us through what a typical day looks like. So they may say, well, I start out in math class and then I go to German class. Then they'll lift their head up and they'll say, but then I get to go to whatever class it is or whatever it is. Um, that joyful piece of their day, that's what every kid needs to have. And that joyful piece, whatever it is, whether it's a ceramics class or a photography class, could be their German class or their math class, whatever, whatever experience that is, that's what all of us need to look for in our kids because it's the clue that will help lead them to things that, um, that they will enjoy doing for a living. What is his or her passion? What do you see that, that child doing? Um, what do they say they want to do? So that we continue to talk about education as a means to satisfying, exciting work that young people can do for a career. So we're, uh, we're really excited about project-based learning and we have a campaign uh, underway right now called uh, project-based, hashtag project-based world. Half of you are going to freelance and half of you will be working in large organizations, but almost all of you will manage your work, stumble towards your purpose. Here's the, the magic formula that, that I and, and lots of people have figured out. Number one. Figure out what you're good at. Find that stuff that produces a, a flow experience where you, you can lose yourself in your work, where you feel really productive. The reason that we think that is so important is that it gives kids an opportunity to engage in really interesting, important, often challenging, real world problems. And in a project-based school, there's usually a lot of room uh, for voice and choice, for kids to have some ability to co-create that project to decide what the subject is going to be or how they're going to express what they've learned. So from an early age to, to make at least a portion of the education student-centered, to put them in the driver's seat, to, to give them a chance to uh, do their own thing. And so th this is hard in an era of accountability where we want to focus on reading, writing, and math, but to 
to create room in the schedule and to connect kids with interesting resources so that they have the ability to explore uh, what it is they're interested in. But a lot of times they, they don't take the time to think about what do I really know about me? And when, when you ignore that part and you just continue barreling forward, you do yourself a disservice because at some point you will potentially be in a job that you hate, doing what it was that you everybody thought you would be good at doing, and maybe you're good at doing it, but you really don't enjoy it. So that's, that's not what we want for anyone in society. We want people to connect with wonderful and meaningful work that plays to their strengths, but that brings them joy and that the world needs. Tolls came to our school a few times and just I saw all the different opportunities. I know different programs that interested me such as like auto tech, firefighting, nursing, and then pharmacy. I think what we do best is we provide options for students outside of the traditional academic or traditional four-year college degree prep. So in addition to those those options we provide, I think, an opportunity for students to find their passion and to start to connect what they're taking in those academic classes to what they want to do when they go on from high school. And many students don't know what they want to do, so I think just as importantly, we can help them to discover that. I chose pharmacy, but like I said, I had no idea what I wanted to do, but coming here definitely was it was a shot in the dark. I kind of argued with myself a lot, like, should I go, should I not go? What's, what's going to happen to me if I do go? What, what kind of benefits am I going to get out of this? I used to drive by my own career tech center. Um, it's on, a, it's on a busy road that, that we drive by a number of times. And I used to drive by and I would look to the side and I would think, well, my kids won't go there because they're going to college. I know what happens in, in that building and it's not what my kids will do. A lot of people were judging me going to Tolls, like tons of people. They're like, why are you going? You don't know anyone that's going. I'm like, well, that's what I want to do. Like a lot of people won't even come out to like see it because they're just so like stuck on it. Like they won't even open their mind to look at it. The thought that she would leave that environment and you know stand on the bus and get on a Tolls Tech bus, right? You can imagine the stigma. It still exists if you're the other kids, right? There goes the Tolls Tech kids. A lot of my friends that didn't want me to leave the homeschool, they were like, oh, don't go there. That's where all the bad kids go. That's where all like the rejects who just like didn't do good. That's where the homeschool send them to pick them back up. And that's like, I got here. That's not true at all. I see there's a lot of brilliant people that come here. Um, I made the mistake 20 years ago of really reducing its scope uh, when I was a school superintendent. And then I think nationally, the push to get more kids ready for college uh, really, uh, for a number of years, pushed uh, career and technical education to the background. We as society and as adults and as um, communities have devalued those jobs. There are millions of jobs and that pay really well in welding and plumbing and contracting and nursing that you know do sure. require a little bit more physical output can be far more rewarding. Year after year, plumbers, steam fitters, pipe fitters, carpenters, all these jobs that we were hearing didn't exist, they were there and nobody was giving them any love and it was madness. We have done a disservice to um, I think education and what education should be by basically saying that everybody after high school has to go to college. Everybody needs after high school skills or academic credentials that are validated and high quality. Everybody needs that in today's workforce. But it doesn't always have to be 
a traditional college. And make higher education faster and easier to access, especially vocational training. For the life of me, I don't know why we have stigmatized vocational education. Why aren't people more aware of the high paying potential of jobs in the energy sector, the hands-on types of jobs that you don't have to have a college degree for. The chairman asked it before, you know, it, clearly it's a political environment, but the answer to your question involves everything from social anthropology to, to just straight up society. For all the talk around the issue, the biggest conversation that I've seen, the one that really gets resonant, happens around the kitchen table with moms and dads and their teenagers. Look, what is possible? You know, one thing I, I think that's 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 very important is that parents understand. You know, a lot of parents have this um, this thought that if you have a job in manufacturing, that's a that's a crummy job. You know, I, I don't want my I don't want my my student in manufacturing. You know, that's going to be dirty. That's where you know people go that don't have skills, and that's not true. I mean, that's an area now that's very clean technology, high-level skills. The pay is great. Since I've been here, we have been working really hard to change the perception of career technical education. Um, it has been a partnership with advisory committees, with industry partners, and staying current with where industry is headed and continuing to build the programs that the market needs and enterprises are wanting. Our employers, those who provide our students internships, they see, they not only see the skill sets that we're training within our programs, they help drive them through advisory committees and other partnerships that we have. Here at Moore Norman, we've just passed a $60 million bond issue. Uh, it passed by like 64%. So I think what that said loud and clear to me, to our board, to our, our school, is that the, the citizens of Cleveland County think that career and technical education is important. We think it's so important that we're going to invest our tax dollars in, into this, this school. So, I mean, I think it, the people spoke. So, I, you know, I, I do think that our image is, is, a, is a great one here at Moore Norman. Do we still have people that think we're, uh, you know, where people go that can't? Yeah, we probably do. But I think that that image is, is definitely changing, and I, I think that vote was an indicator of that. One of our, our probably biggest home runs is our pre-engineering program. Uh, we have actual, um, have put pre-engineering students out into the high schools. So we, we're serving about 350 students in, in pre-engineering, very proud of the relationship we've developed there. And we try to listen to them and, and uh, try to tweak what we do to enhance what they do. And, and they work to support us as well. I've traveled the state and I've visited our schools and some of, some of the most advanced training I've seen anywhere are in our career centers. Let me ask you a question. How did we ever lose our way on vocational education? Why did we put it down? Why did we not understand its value? I had a group of kids in vocational education come in to see me a couple weeks ago. They were, well, they were dressed to the nines. They were motivated, they were smart, they were excited about what they were studying, in a sense of direction. I mean, they knew exactly what they wanted to do. One wanted to be an accountant, was out in the field and getting their math and everything else in the traditional school, and wanted to be an accountant. That's where she wanted to go. Another one, a teacher, wanted to be a teacher and was excited about the prospects. Another one wanted to be a veterinarian. 12th grader, I'm going to be a veterinarian, I'm going to go to school and do it. One of them wanted, wants to own his own construction company, okay? I asked him maybe someday if I could get a job. 
We would all have been proud to call them our own kids, and that's why I want to see this kind of high-quality experience in both jobs and learning. We're going to bring it down to the seventh grade. We want kids to have a connection to this in the seventh grade. We have to work with our partner schools, the traditional school districts, K through 12, to um, really educate them on how they can teach in a more project-based manner and how they can assess in a more project-based manner. And we've done that through a lot of professional development. In secondary school, middle school and high school in particular, that, that work experiences that connect kids to particular uh, career pathways that they're interested in um, is a super important development. I'm Cindy Binion. I'm a 7th and 8th grade logistics teacher at West Jefferson Middle School. I actually am a satellite teacher for uh, Tolls Tech. But we talk a lot about marketing. Um, we talk a lot about why that program is at West Jefferson. And the big reason is because there are a lot of jobs in uh, logistics these days, uh, supply chain management, and especially in West Jefferson. We've got a lot of distribution centers there. And so uh, because of that, it's a great place for this program. And so we talk a lot about those things kind of in the underlying uh, discussions on marketing and customers and target markets. Um, but it just really does feed up into logistics. We are starting to realize that m middle school uh, students are where we need to start with really thinking careers and exploration. High school is a little bit too late and middle schoolers are ready. We've got the means, we've got the, uh, you know, we're, a lot of schools are going one-to-one -one with technology. So, um, you know, we've got the resources and we've got Ohio Means Jobs behind the whole program as well. So I think that um, even though logistics is new as far as the middle school program, I think you'll start seeing a lot more of those things that match up with the career growth um, for our future. And I think we can demonstrate to the policymakers, to the parents, that this really is a, not only a better way to conduct education, it's critical. We are right now in the middle of making a very profound transformation from a time of scarcity to a time of abundance in education resources. And I really do think that will change fundamentally the kinds of educational organizations that are possible and that um, will become. Uh, I'm an advocate because I feel like uh, I want other parents and people I work with to know that these are real opportunities for a kid to focus on, find a skill they want to do, get an idea what they don't want to do, but more importantly, get focused. We actually get to do the stuff that we're learning, and that's helped me tremendously. Like, I actually look forward to, like, learning now. Like, I used to just, like, hate it. Now it's, like, exciting because it's what I want to do, so I'm just more excited about that. And there's lots of ways to, to earn and learn. These guys are going to finish college with 100 grand in their pocket instead of 100 grand in debt. We have a lot of uh, college graduates that come out and can't find a job. Why? They've done a pretty good job on those broad skills, but, but they're not employable, right? They, they haven't gone deep on the, the, the technical aspects of a particular career. I think coming to a career school, it really gives you a head start where you want to be and get you to where you need to go. I know the different career paths I can take from where I stand right now and also test if I can do this job because I might like it but I might not be able to do it but I realize that I can now and I want to pursue it and now I definitely know this is the career path I want. So I think it makes their courses more relevant so as they go on to pursue higher education they're doing it for more intrinsic reason. I think it's always beneficial for individuals to recognize their strengths, no matter whether they're making a decision about a job or about what they do after high school or, or about 
who they marry or who they live with or knowing what you're good at and what you like and what you're not good at and what you prefer and what you value that self-knowledge is going to be the foundational insight that lets you make all those next decisions well dreaming is fun and it's great and if you act upon what you want to do, if you act on your dreams, it's definitely something to take seriously. Like, I feel like I have a higher potential here, becoming something that I really dream of becoming. Baseball player, teacher. When I grow up, I want to be a dragon. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. I'm a firefighter and a teacher. A princess. When I grow up, I want to be a painter. A oh, alligator trainer. Um, a ladies' man. Player. Oh, a superhero. Wonder Woman. He can fly. 